Acute painful episodes, often called sickle cell related pain crises, are a substantial cause of morbidity and sickle cell disease. Here in San Diego at ASH 2016, data were presented from Sustain. This is a multi-center randomized placebo-controlled double-blind 12-month study, and we're talking about a new agent. So to talk about this, I'm with Dr. Uh, Kenneth Ataga, who is a professor of medicine and director of the Comprehensive Sickle Cell Program at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. First, before we talk about cell G1, let's talk about the sickle cell-related pain crises. How bad is it and what therapies are currently in use to help through these crises? So sickle cell painful crisis is a significant uh, morbidity in patients with sickle cell disease. Um, these pain episodes are unpredictable uh, and they can occur at any time. And the pain episodes can vary from being very mild to being particularly severe. So I have had patients who have had pain uh, so severe that they describe them as being as bad as worse than having a, um, pregnancy contractions. Oh, wow. So uh, patients might have mild pain and they can take pain, mild pain medicines like Tylenol at home and that helps. Uh, but sometimes those pain medicines do not help and they have to come into the hospital to get uh, strong medicines like morphine and dilaudid and things like that. So it's a wide spectrum. So tell us a little about this first in class humanized anti-P selectin antibody. Yeah, so um, this uh, antibody is a um, uh, humanized uh, monoclonal antibody that, um, that binds to P-selectin. And so by binding to P-selectin, it um, prevents interaction between P-selectin and its ligand, which is called PSGL1. And um, by doing that, uh, it actually uh, helps to inhibit this adhesion process between a variety of cells, white blood cells, red blood cells, and the lining of the blood vessel called the endothelium. And, um, when that happens, because and this adhesion process results in occlusion to blood flow. And so by decreasing this adhesion process, there's actually improved blood flow through the small ve blood vessels, and that can help to uh, alleviate uh, complications in sickle cell disease, we think. So describe sustained to me. How was it designed and describe the patients? So, um, so the sustained study was a multi-center study um, that um, uh, looked at the efficacy of uh, cell G1, which is currently called crizinlizumab. Uh, so it was um, a uh, three-arm study, uh, so patients were in, randomized to get either high-dose cell G1 at 5 mg per kilogram body weight, or low-dose cell G1 at 2.5 mg per kilogram body weight, or a placebo. And patients uh, who got this, um, uh, when who were randomized, received two loading doses two weeks apart, following which they got treatments every four weeks for up to one year. Um, uh, as part of this study, we evaluated a variety of endpoints. The primary endpoint was the annual rate of painful crisis, but we looked at a variety of secondary endpoints, including the annual rate of days hospitalized, the um, times to first and second painful crisis, and uh, uh, a variety of macrokinetic endpoints as well. In addition, we looked at um, what we referred to as uncomplicated painful crisis. These were painful episodes uh, in which patients did not have some other complications in sickle cell disease like acute chest syndrome and sequestration crisis and um, uh, priapism. So what did you find? Uh, so the results were particularly exciting uh, because uh, we found that uh, in patients who got the high dose of the cell G1 compared with placebo, uh, they had a, an up to 45.3% reduction uh, in the rate of painful crisis uh, over this time period. Uh, so not only was this a clinically meaningful reduction uh, in the rate of painful crisis, but it was statistically significant. Uh, when we looked at the comparison between the low-dose cell gene arm and the um, uh, placebo group, we found a reduction of about 30%, but this was not statistically significant. I would add that um, uh, in addition to this primary endpoint, we did some subgroup analysis. And so we found that um, patients who got hydroxyurea had a benefit, so further decrease in their painful uh, crisis rate, and patients not on hydroxyurea also had, a, had an improvement. So, Regardless of whether patients were getting concomitant hydroxyurea, they had a response, so that's good. Uh, we also looked at patients who had uh, different forms of sickle cell disease, because different forms of patients were eligible for this study. And we found that not only the patients with sickle cell anemia, that's hemoglobin SS, the most common variant of sickle cell disease, have a clinical response, but patients who have other forms of sickle cell disease, what we call compound heterozygote forms, hemoglobin SC disease, sickle beta thalassemia, those patients also had a response as well which is which was, uh, very good to see. In terms of safety, what did you find? So overall, the drug was well tolerated. So like with every study, you'll find some um, adverse events. Right. Um, so the um, adverse events that uh, appear to occur most commonly in the active treatment arm um, were arthralgia, so pain in, the, uh, pain in the joints, 
Uh, some patients had pruritus, some patients had vomiting, some patients had diarrhea. Uh, but overall, um, the uh, incidence of these adverse events was not particularly high, and uh, overall the drug was well tolerated. So you had about 200 patients, I believe, that you studied? 198 patients, yes. Uh, so what in terms of what's next? So, that, so that's a good question. So for one, this was a phase two study, uh, and so um, the sponsor of the of this trial would have to uh, have an end of study discussion with the regulatory authorities, the FDA, uh, to decide on what the direction, uh, the next direction would be in terms of, well, should this drug be approved based on data we have now or, right. will, or if it's free trial be required? So I don't know the answer to that just yet. It depends on what happens with the FDA meeting. So that's one. And I think um, the next thing is that um, this study was restricted to um, patients between the ages of 16 and 65. So although we had children, we didn't have particularly young children. So um, I think everyone is interested in performing a study looking at younger children as well because they have painful crises as well. And we want to see the effect in that population. So for the most part, you were happy with what you saw? Yes, please. Um, I've been doing this for a long time and um, we don't have very many options for one. We only have hydroxyurea, right? So um, having a drug that has this um, amount, that shows such beneficial effects is very um, um, impressive and I'm quite pleased. Well, congratulations, number one and number two. If you get more data, please come back and talk to us again. Thank you. We'll do that. We have at ASH 2016 a number of pieces, both up online and in print. Please see ASH Clinical News. I'm Rick McGuire.